Hi folks and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look on the top 6 GNOME shell extensions. These are the extensions that I use on my computers and I find useful. These also have minimal performance impact on GNOME shell compared to other competitors of these extensions, uh, let's say. So without any other further ado, let's get started. On number 6, we have Dynamic Panel Transparency. This extension will do exactly what it says. It will adjust the transparency level of the top bar in GNOME shell. So for instance, when a window is maximized, it's going to go to full opacity and full transparency when not. Also, when uh, a window tries to attach to it, it will turn completely opaque. Uh, for instance, if I get this window and put it uh, stuck against it, you can see that it turns opaque and then it goes again to no, tr to no opacity whatsoever. In the customizability menu, you can also adjust various options. Every time you adjust something, you have to restart the GNOME shell and it will take a bit until it will take effect, until it settles in after that uh, adjustment. It will be a bit unstable, but once that's done, it will be just great. And you can see I can adjust the transition speed from one second default all the way to five seconds, or if you want just to basically an instant, if you don't want any fading to it uh, off the opacity, you can enable custom text coloring. So for instance, if I will restart the GNOME shell now, you can see that the text turns red. Uh, you can also adjust the shadowing and uh, in terms of text and icons as well. You can also set the opacity for maximized mode and unmaximized mode. So for instance, if you want to make it on 40% opacity on unmaximized and 65% for maximized mode, you can do that. Uh, if I would restart now the GNOME shell, you can see now it's on 40% opacity. And then when I maximize this window, it goes to 65%, so you can adjust that. Uh, very nice to get a nice opacity right there. And uh, you can also do uh, completely inverted if you want to, to be completely opaque uh, when it's not, and then completely transparent on maximized. You can also set a custom color to the top panel, so from your default theme or from black, you can make it to let's say yellow like uh, like so and then when you actually do trigger the full maximized opacity you can see that the color has been changed and also you can do individual app tweaking so you can select an application and edit the opacity and panel color uh, individually for that app so you can do that uh, if you take your time and if you want that customizability, it is there and you can use it. So for instance, I'm going to add for Sublime and I'm going to go to Edit. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make it green and I'm going to make it to 60% opacity and set it to, let's set it to also always trigger the panel. And for instance, now, uh, it will take a bit to apply the settings once I restart the GNOME shell. Uh, it will be a bit unstable, but it will settle in a few seconds and it should be just right. So now if I would go to open up Sublime, uh, you can see that the panel turns green because I set it to always trigger the panel so to get the maximized trigger. And once I quit it, it goes back to the default settings. You can see it behaves just normal, but when I do open Sublime, it will uh, do those settings. It will always keep it triggered to full, to the maximized mode, and it will set the color. So on number five, we have Hide Top Bar. This extension does exactly what it says. It will auto-hide the top bar because if you will take a look into gnome if uh, i would open up uh, a program let's say sublime if i open that app 
you can see that it there is a lot of space wasted. So if I'm gonna go to Sublime right now, you can see that in maximized mode, there's a lot of space wasted. You have the top bar, then you have the title bar with the buttons, and then you also have that menu bar with file edit selection, and that wastes a lot of space compared to, let's say, Ubuntu Unity, which used to merge those together and gave a really nice clean look. So this extension uh, wants to fix that by hiding it when an app wants to take that space or when it's in maximized mode. And that is great because you don't want to always see the top bar and it's a light extension that doesn't have so much performance impact and also uh, saves a bit of space on your screen. So you can also set settings like uh, showing it when the cursor approaches. You can put a hotkey to actually trigger it open and close to toggle that state for it. Uh, but I want that cursor right there. You can keep the hot corner from the, I think the activities button right there. Uh, if you want to, you can also uh, set the pressure for which uh, it should open up. So you have to apply a pressure with your cursor. So I'm gonna prove that right now. So if I'm gonna go and set that to 500, and I'm gonna open up Sublime, you can see when I just put the cursor there, it doesn't open, uh, it stays closed. But when I keep the, uh, keep the cursor pushed against and push the mounts up with a certain minimum speed, it will trigger the panel open. And that is great because you don't want to always open uh, just when you just glance the cursor to, let's say, close the window. You can also set a hotkey and adjust the animation speed, of course. You can set a hotkey to open that uh, panel for you if you don't want to you just use the cursor. For instance, I can map any key on my keyboard. Uh, so for instance, here's the numpad plus, and if I'm gonna go to Sublime Back, if I press the plus button on my numpad, you can see it open and then close again once I press it again. So you can toggle the state real quick uh, with a button and also the cursor pressing against the top edge will work just fine. Uh, if you want to remove it, I think it's backspace to remove the hotkey. Um, you have to go again to that uh, to set a hotkey and then just press backspace to remove it. Okay, and then you can also uh, add a delay, and also this IntelliHide, you can stop it so it's always hidden, and then when you put your cursor, it's there, so it's always hidden, uh, and then when you put your cursor back, uh, it will open up, and then when you take your cursor back, uh, it will stay closed, just like the Windows Taskbar does, I think, in the AutoHide. On number four, we have the CPU Power Manager. Uh, here you can actually, uh, you have to also click the attempt installation button uh, when you firstly install it, but then uh, it will work normally every time you boot. You have here to set the frequency, the minimum and maximum for your processor and enable or disable the turbo boost. What's great about it, it's that you can have profiles for that. You can also display here uh, the frequency, gigahertz or megahertz, that's the only customizability you have at it, but you can make profiles. So this isn't about the looks, but it's about the functionality. That's great on my laptop, I love it that I can make profiles for frequency. Uh, if I want to be in a power saver mode, I can do that with a profile. If I want high performance, I can have a profile for that. It's really useful since most of the distros don't have uh, power management for laptops built in. On number three, we have Open Weather. This extension is uh, just another weather extension, but it's great that you don't have to open anything. It's just basically a widget integrated into your top bar. And that's great because you can see the weather, you can see the forecast, uh, and you can also add multiple locations. So if you go into the customizability, you can add locations, set the provider right there, uh, set the refresh rate, that it automatically refreshes the info. 
you can get the location providers uh, set in the in the next tab if you want you can set uh, right there uh, the refresh rate you can set who provides the location information you can set the units uh, right there if you want Celsius or Fahrenheit kilometers or mile, miles per hour you can set the position in the top panel so right now it's in center next to the clock you can set it to the right next to your tray icons or to your left uh, I prefer it in the center near my clock uh, you can also set the position where the window will open so now it's on the left on zero on 100% it goes to the right I prefer it right in the middle uh, around there to around 56 you can set another other stuff like the wind direction to be shown by arrows or the uh, temperature right there in the panel so it shows always in the top panel without opening the window you can see the temperature uh, there are lots of customizability so right here you can add multiple locations so if you for instance you can put the coordinates straight away or just search for a location uh, that's basically what that geolocation provider really does and for instance now it's on the default location and I can go there and go to the locations button and select the other location so you can uh, add or remove locations with the plus and minus buttons on number two we have unite unite uh, will just bring back your unity look from Ubuntu uh, that's what it's meant to do uh, it has kind of the same intentions like high top bar to save that screen estate uh, I use this instead of the high top bar, I, I prefer it over. Uh, these buttons right here in the corner will hide eventually uh, if I close the window. But you can see now if I maximize, uh, the window buttons move up there, the title bar moves up there. So many uh, programs will just save that space. So uh, if I open up the the tweaks again, you can see that uh, once I maximize the buttons disappear and they are put up there and you have also tons of customizability for it so you can see it saves a lot of screen estate uh, by merging those together like Unity used to do you don't have also the, the file menu stuff right there but uh, that's good enough because it has the minimum performance impact compared to let's say no title bar or pixel saver you can set the fonts, you can set if it if you want it just like Unity to just push everything to the right, now nothing in the middle. Uh, you can uh, also just show the system tray icons. I do like that enabled. Put them to grayscale if you want to. Uh, also the desktop names. Um, that I think will mostly be when you do go into uh, just nothing, no windows open. Uh, if some name should be displayed into the top left corner like the application name uh, I do have that you can also edit that what it displays uh, when it's in basically uh, this mode right here you can see it's nothing I do have that text box also blank there on what it should show uh, because you can put custom text you can make it to display or not the activities button so you can just always hide it you can see now it's gone uh, I do like that there uh, the window title bars uh, generally uh, you can also put those to never now on this uh, extensions you can't really see it uh, mostly on programs like sublime you can you can test that out if you want to uh, there it will make an effect and also you can go and uh, show uh, the window name right there you can see it says shell extensions in the corner uh, there you have I like that enabled because you do have the uh, you do have the option to click on those and get some options there uh, you can you can see that and there are other customizability options like uh, getting the buttons to always show on the top bar you can see that just tested it uh, you can set how the buttons should look you can put themes into it 
and make it look whatever you want like. Uh, I have it on this theme because it matches my ant theme. You can get uh, any type of buttons you want and you can add manually the themes if you want to. Just create a folder and put the icons there. Put those names how they should be. And also you can set where those notification pop-ups show. So right now they're in center, like they're on default. You can put them on the right, like they used to be on Unity. Uh, but I'm gonna just let it like this. On number one, we have Clipboard Indicator. This is a clipboard manager. So uh, this is what it looks like once you do install it. And it is a great extension for productivity. I do like it. I do love it that I can store multiple things into my clipboard. So if I open here Gedit, let's actually type some text that uh, is easier to just uh, understand here. And if I do, uh, you can see here, I just put these uh, three lines of text. If I do, I'm just gonna disable the private mode. Uh, if I go here and just uh, control C on all three of them, you can see the notification pop-up that says it was copied to the clipboard. And you can see all three, uh, just at the order I put them into the clipboard, they do appear there. Once I click control C, now if I click control V, they paste and you can uh, select which one should be currently on control V. Uh, so when you click that, the one selected here in this little drop down uh, can be set. You can also delete them individually or clear the complete history. The customization for this extension uh, is very useful. I'm not going to go through all of it, but you can set how many items should be in that uh, drop down. Uh, how many characters should be in the preview, the maximum character size, and uh, uh, many other useful options. So, yeah guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button. See you next time on How Do IT.